Hello guys! Welcome to today's video. We are going to talk a little bit more in depth about elimination communication. I said that kind of weird. If you are new to elimination communication or you don't know what it is but you're interested, I do have I think one or two videos where I really go into uh, just explaining it and talking about the benefits of it and everything like that. I'll kind of go over that a little bit here but if you want to know more about that I'll have those videos linked below. So elimination communication is if you're new to it you can think of it kind of like infant potty training however I try to be careful with that with those terms because it's not potty training at all. It's like the opposite of diaper training that's the best way I can explain it and a lot of people are like diaper training is not a thing but it really is I mean when they come out when they're born they you know they're not wearing diapers you are training them to go potty in their diapers because they eventually understand that when they have a diaper on is when they can go potty and even when they get around the older ages of two three or four um, I know that a lot of kids have a hard time using the toilet because they have comfort and they have learned to go to the bathroom in their diapers um, nothing wrong with that that's exactly you know what no what <laughs> normal people do um, but there are other options like elimination communication and um, when I first heard of it I thought it was like nuts and I was just like you can't have a baby go potty on the toilet but you really can it's very pretty simple actually so um, yeah there are so many benefits to it like avoiding diaper rash avoiding constipation and UTIs um, it really deepens your communication skills with your baby um, not to say that you can't have good communication skills if you don't do this but it really really does because you are very in tune with their body movements and their cues and that's kind of how you learn when they need to go to the bathroom so I have a lot of people that feel really intimidated <laughs> or I should say I have a lot of people that talk to me about wanting to do it but they feel really uh, intimidated and I totally get that it's a new it's a new idea it's it just sounds intimidating it sounds like a lot of work but I have never felt like it's a lot of work and um, I have felt intimidated by it so let me tell you what a normal day is like with us when we are fully using elimination communication um, when she wakes up I will take her diaper off and immediately put her on the toilet. Diaper changes are going to be key times for putting your babies on the toilet. Um, a lot of babies you probably know if you change your baby's diaper a lot of them go to the bathroom right then and there usually just peeing because of the cold air. So I like to take her diaper off when I'm actually right next to her potty. You can use I'll go over like the different things you can use too in just a moment but um, and then we will usually kind of let her be either in just like naked or uh, with a light cloth diaper on. We do use cloth diapers, but you can do this with disposables as well. And then I will nurse her and after I nurse her, I put her back on the potty. And after she takes a nap, I put her back on the potty. So you can start out by doing just the key times, which are those changing when you're changing a diaper, after feeding and after a nap. Um, you will start to learn and kind of notice what their facial expressions are and what their body movements are when they go potty and that's going to help you learn their cues but at first do not expect to see oh, any cues um, it's literally just going to be timing and it's going to be luck that you're going with um, so you can either use a baby toilet you can use uh, a potty seat reducer to go on your toilet or some people use a sink or a bathtub or even outside um, if you are familiar a lot of people like in China this is what they do with babies they will have pants that have holes right where the the butt is so that when they're out and about they literally have their babies going potty on the sides of the streets now I do not think that's very sanitary but do what works for you. Um, we have a little pink potty and it works really well. I do have to hold her on it. Anything prior to three months I believe. Um, I'll, I'll correct that if I'm wrong but anything younger than three months you will need to hold your baby instead of sitting them on a toilet. You're going to need to hold them. I forget what the hold is called but let me show you. You're just gonna hold them like this 
over the sink or potty, whatever you choose to do. Um, I found that it was really easy to hold her like this over our regular toilet. Y you can sit backwards on the toilet if that makes sense. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll try to share it with you guys. Or just holding her over the sink for when I knew that she wasn't going to poop. I don't really like the idea of poop going down a sink, but again, a lot of people do. Just do what you're comfortable with. So those are the types of um, things that you can use. A lot of people even use just a bowl. You literally just need something that you can clean out and that's gonna be convenient for you. Um, when we get more into, when she gets a little bit older, we will probably have a potty in the car because personally, if I'm going to do elimination communication, I really want to be able to give her the chance to eliminate in places other than her diaper when she's getting a little bit older and totally gets it. But that's just me and you don't have to feel bad if you do anything different. It can be very flexible. Um, if your baby's sick or not feeling it, back off. Keep them in diapers all day. You know, you kind of just have to read what your baby is telling you. And they are probably going to go through, I think it's called like a potty pause, where they do not want to do it anymore. And with my son, I found that this was around the time that he was starting to crawl. And then around the time that he was starting to walk. He was just, he had too much going on. He did not want to sit still on the potty. And personally, I just kind of backed off a bit during those times. But some things that you can do when they get a little older like this and they're really wiggly is you can put a toy in the bathroom. I like to use books. Um, shoot, adults use books. <laughs> but you know, um, something like that where she can kind of focus and it helps her relax enough just to sit for a moment while she potties because doing anything at this age it's hard for them to just sit still and do one thing. So I definitely recommend that when they're like older than four months is to have a book or a toy in the bathroom that you can use. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else. I kind of want to leave this open to where you can leave me specific questions so I can do another video and address any questions that you guys have. So her potty is right here, it's by our toilet. And to be honest, it's a really great idea to put them on the potty when you go on the potty. So I do like to have her nearby. She has her clothes on, but I'm just going to show you. I literally just sit her down like so. <laughs> and then for her, she sits up pretty good, so I'll hold her hands. But before she could sit up well, I would actually just hold her back on. So give whatever support you need so that they're not falling off the toilet, obviously but it's really simple. I'm doing it just like any other kid would do, except I'm giving her a little bit of support. I feel like I forgot to add a pretty important thing. Every time that I put Arlo on the potty, I say, do you need to go pee? Psss, make a pee sound. Or do you need to go poo poo? I'll do like a grunt. And I do that every single time. Of course, she's not gonna answer me back in the beginning, but I promise you, now, when I put her on the potty, the first thing I do is make the pee sound. She almost instantly pees right away. Sometimes when I haven't made that sound, it takes her a minute to go. Um, and then, I'm not kidding, she has began telling us when she has to poop by making that grunting sound. And I know a lot of babies grunt when they have to go poop, but hers is like a playful growl. That's what I'll call it. Uh, which she started doing on the potty when I would say err, she would go err, like this cute little growl. So now she does that growl before she has to poop. She just did it in the background. She's just copying me right now. But I will say, oh, do you need to go poop? Instead of just, you know, like she could just be growling to play around. So I'll say, do you need to go poop? And she has literally three or four times now said, ah, kind of like, yeah. And that could be totally coincidence, but I am sold because I have seen this work with my son. I know it's working for her and I know that those are her cues. But you might not see cues for a while, but just be consistent with whatever sounds or words you want to associate with going pee and poop. And just be very consistent about that because eventually they will, um, they will relate those two together and probably start telling you 
or you know start repeating you with those cues or sounds that you are making um, and then the other thing is when you think they're all done they might get squirmy or wiggly that's usually my little indicator that she's done but I will say are you done and of course she's not answering me yet but I think we will start doing a sign language for done um, because they can learn sign language really quick and really early so you can decide if you want to do something like that as well all right guys I think that answers all of the questions that I have up until this point so leave any more questions down below and we will see you in the next video have a good day bye Thank <laughs> you.